All right, this tutorial is going to show you how to create a blur motion effect when there is no blur motion there originally. So it's how you can create your own on a subject. All right, so here's the image I have here. I'm going to be making this the truck here um, in a into a blur. And so the first where we start off with this is you're actually going to be making a selection using the quick selection tool. And um, so make that your active tool. If you want to bring down the brush hardness, you can. Um, you can. You've done. You've worked with this tool before. Um, at least you should have. It's at this point, making a selection. So um, that that'll soften the edges of it. This is not super as critical as it is in some. Is it is going to get blurred out. So um, and the edges, you know, it, they have to be pretty good, but it had to be absolutely as perfect as it, like on some of the other ones when you're doing a montage or whatnot. But you want to get as close as you can. So you just go in here. You start selecting out the subject, and um, if you make a mistake, you know you press the Alt button, and that will um, make it into a a a, a little negative, and it'll t it'll take away from the selection. So anyway, I'm just going to spend a moment here to get this selected. So you see, I've got it pretty well selected, um, and so now uh, what I'm going to do is you're going to actually. Um, Copy. They're going to be copying this onto another layer. So the, the one of the easiest ways to do that. Um, there's different ways of doing it, but I want to teach you another way. Is you can go to layer. I mean layer. Um, go and then go to um, go to new layer new, and you go to layer via copy. All right. What it does it just copies that that, that layer on that one part layer on there. Um, that you've selected. So now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be applying um, <clears throat> a, the, a blur motion to this. And so this is a filter and you go up, so you go up to filter and you go to blur and you go to motion blur. <clears throat> and now this is going to vary depending on your subject, um, the angle. <clears throat> like if you if I were to plug in zero here, be straight across, and if your image is running straight across the field of view, then that would work. But that isn't working for this image because the truck is at a slight angle. <clears throat> so you can do this by taking this little thing right here and moving this around. You see that's too far, so I, I'm just angling it different directions there. Um, I figured out on this one that six actually works pretty well. I think it's a pretty good angle. Um, maybe a five. Let's see. Let's try a five. Yeah, five seems to be pretty good. Somewhere around there. Um, so just you kind of line it up with your subject is moving across. And the distance here, this will be variable depending on the size of your image. So it's it, you know it really vary, it varies. So um, you know up in the 900 range works pretty well on this one. It may not work. So, you know it it really. I mean you just the more and more I go, um, the higher the number, it's going to do more of that. So um, I'm just going to keep it around maybe around nine you know, a 900 or so. So you just want to get a blur. We're going to do more of this in a moment. We're going to do have, I'm going to have it affect a little bit more. We just want to get a start with something there. So, so again, getting the angle where you need it to be and then the distance here is just variable depending on your subject. Now you press OK. And now um, what we're going to do is you're going to, um, this layer, we're going to copy it over several times. And what we're going to do, and it's going to make this more extreme. So we're going to do is the easiest way of doing this is <clears throat> hold down if you have a PC it's control J and if it's a Mac you command J so I'm going to hold I'm going to go control J and you see it just it takes it and puts it on there again I'm going to do that another and so I'm holding down again uh, control J you can do that several times you know maybe I want to do one more just for good measure don't worry we will get this truck part of this truck back in a moment but now you've got them all there um, and you've got several, so probably a good four layers is probably going to be enough. So now what we're going to do is you're going to take and we need to merge these these layers down. So what you want to do is I want you to hide the background, okay? And then you're going to go over here on you can see on the top layer here, right click, and you're going to merge visible, um, and that that will take and bring all this down. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click the eyeball here so I can see the background again. Okay, so now we, we want to um, get the subject to not um, be completely everything across our blur. We have some of the subject in focus. So we're going to use the gradient tool. So on the sidebar it looks like this. If it's not showing, you need to click on these right here and you want to get it look like that. 
All right, that's where we want to find the gradient tool. So you click on that, and this should be on the, squ the square one here, and then it should also be bl uh, black to white, so this first one here is what you want to have it on. It usually defaults to that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull, you know, depending on which direction it is, I, you know, it may be from right to left or left to right, whatever the direction is, but um, mine is going to be on this angle here is where I want more of this subject to be in focus on this side than back there, so I start on this side. So I'm going to um, just drop in here somewhere, and I'm going to then left click and uh, hold, and I'm going to pull it across. Now this, you know, how far you go really just depends on, you can try different variations on it. All right, so now what you need to do is you need to create a layer mask on this layer here, on this top top layer right there. So I'm going to press this right here, and this is going to add a layer mask to that layer there. Okay. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to be using what's called the gradient tool. So it looks like this right here. All right, and if this is not showing, just click on this, and you'll see it, it appears right there. Um, this should be black. It should be on this one here, the linear gradient. And it should be, um, you know, the black and white. This one right here, right? And you're gonna drop in here somewhere. It depends on, you know, from right to left, left to right, depends on where, or up to down, wherever, you, however your direction of your your subject is. But I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna click right here, and I'm gonna pull it across. How far you go just really depends on the subject. And now I can see, you know, that's probably pretty good. Um, it's probably where I want it. Don't worry about these artifacts here. We're gonna get rid of that in a moment. Because um, you probably want some more of that to uh, to be out of there, because that doesn't look quite look right. So now that's that's what I've, I think works pretty well with this one. All right. So now, um, in order to get rid of these artifacts in here, we need to use the brush tool on on the layer mask. So we click on the brush tool. I think it's a good idea to lower your opacity. I've got mine at forty three percent, forty. You know, some of that range is works pretty well. For around 40% just to kind of soften it don't come in too too harsh with it so you can get a nice soft blend in here and you want to make sure that the hardness of your brush is probably down to zero that would be best change the brush size remember it's the brackets on your keyboard and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this 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 residual stuff here so I go like this and you know this is and you can see it's disappearing over here and this is um, and it's I'm just going like that and pulling that around and it and that that'll get rid of all that and then I think also on here on the I want this to you know a little bit be a, this to be a little bit not so um you know have some more focus there on the window and so I'm gonna go ahead and just make a look a little bit more a little more of the truck and you can I'll fade back maybe a little bit there so have a little more of that truck in focus um, and that looks pretty good you know you, you can see over there what it's doing and it's you know taken away and it's making a little bit more uh, so I'm just gonna probably bring that one in there too and um, so get it to where you want it and then now yours may be done at this point um, there is a issue here I think though with this image is that the wheel you know this truck does have to not be moving um, you know if you take a picture of a car moving then you wouldn't have to deal with this as much um, but this this doesn't look very convincing with these the wheel that they're not spinning so I'm going to show that part of it. if you've if you're done at this point you everything looks good then you're ready to go um, you know you can always clear out a little bit more using that mask whatever you you know get, get that to the point you want it and so anyway but I'm going to show now here I'm going to show how to get this wheel look like it's spinning so how that works is um, on this particular case we're going to be we're making a selection okay so what you want to do is you can go to your background I always recommend that on this I would duplicate the layer, um, just background copy, just in case you mess it up. You have something to back up. You have something to fall back on. You have to start all over. So, in this case, what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to be making. I'm going to be using the since it's a circular. I'm going to be using the elliptical. Um, this is a selection tool, so it's elliptical marquee tool. And so the best way to do this is because um, I want to keep it in proportion is I you, if you hold down shift and now I just drop it in like this and I can make it the size I want I can move it around and, um, and get it get it to where I want it to be and um, 
so that's pretty close. And if I want to do change the size of it, you can use the transform tool. Um, so if I want to make that a little bigger, look, it's not quite where I want it to be. So I can go to edit and I can go to um, transform and I can go to scale and I can just make it a little bit bigger. Now it will, what it's going to do is it will, um, it's going to take and make that, um, you know, it's, it's, it is a selection. It's, it's, so it's actually making that, that part of the, it's, you have to be a little careful with this because it's, it's actually making that part of the wheel a little bigger, but it, you know, it's, it's just get it figured out as best you can. Then you press enter and now, um, now you can see I've got that area selected pretty well. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to, uh, back up to our filter and I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to uh, <clears throat> blur and I'm going to go to radial blur. So, um, so what this is, uh, is what it's doing is it's taking that one little selection there and you, it, you can vary the amount of how much it's going to, um, you create a radial blur. So you know, I'm going to have it moving, I don't know, somewhere around there you can just try it. You're not going to see it in, until, until you actually apply it. So I'm going to press OK and see what it looks like. You see now it's created that kind of spin on the tire there. Okay, and then um, I would do the same thing over on this one. Uh, I'll just go ahead and do that one on my own. I have to, I have to, since you know how to do this, I'm just going to finish it out. Now you can see over here that looks like the, the tire is actually spinning there. So, uh, so anyway, that is um, that is how you create a blur when there is not a blur originally there.